Hi, everybody. It must be Friday night. It must be Lounge Friday because here we are, beginning our evening telecast from Lounge Academy, virtual lounge cocktail party where you can put your feet up in your favorite chair, have your favorite beverage in one hand, your favorite pet in the other hand, and enjoy celebrating the songs of the Great American Songbook, as well as the Lounge Cadets of Lounge Academy. I see Justine Jopp has tuned in, and we might have some Justine Jopp surprises later on in the show. Russ is with us as well. Ross, great to see you, sir. Taking a break from working on his classic Mustang. He's got a thumbs... Fingers up to you, too, Justine. And fear not, we have many camera angles for you today, not just this is my hair part camera. I like to start out with this one because I can't, I can't start the show unless I know that my part is straight. And it is. Look at that. It's, it's laser straight. We have our... Far camera, which shows you a few of the lounge cadets are sitting around the the feeding table, as we call it in show business. And uh, Pete of uh, Pete's Garage has everybody uh, hypnotized with a, a scary, a scary story that about about ghosts and goblins. And things, and you can see the back of my head. I'm. I'll, I'll introduce you to, to some of the players here. This is a pre-game warm-up. I'm your color man, Howard. I'm also the host of Lounge Academy, and my co-host is the woman standing in before you there with the fashionable aqua scarf. That's Mary Kunz Goldman. Looks looks like I'm peeking the mic here. And uh, with her back to us is home favorite lounge cadet Lizzie sitting at the, the head of the table, listening with full attentiveness to Pete's Garage Story is Robert Merlin Davis, our own Bob Davis, who's hopefully going to give us a, a set of fantastic jazz piano tonight. I think he he might be actually starting out the uh, the X. Here we've got the. Uh, oops, we got a little. There we go. A little technical things going on here. We we this is the uh, shoulder cam. I'm just giving you a little bit of the larg jargon that uh, from the big TV studio WBIG TV. And this, this camera here is going to be one of your favorites when the lounge cadets are gathered around the piano and celebrating the songs in the Buffalo Song Museum. And we're learning all about the songs as we're enjoying hearing about them. And then uh, we also have the, the corner cam, which is right here. And uh, Okay, it's not too bad. Monitor is blocking a little bit, but not blocking the keys or any of the action. We have a new, you know, there's a lot of uh, technical stuff. We also have your favorite uh, split cam, Michael Powers. Well, it's great to have you out there, sir. And uh, keep checking in from time to time. We'll be on for several hours as we, we try to put a small, small dent in the Great American Songbook, as it's called today. The uh, computer is tattletailing on several big name show business people in the audience. Uh, Chris Andriana, wonderful sir to have you have you with us tonight, and Dave Sutton, the captain. Steve Graham is familiar to us on both sides of the camera, and really he's he's uh, known to the world on both sides of the camera. He does. 
works cameras for, for the movies in the movie industry. Marta Vago, all the way from California. She knows a thing or two about show business. It's, it's great to have, have you here, Marta. She's part of the show business team of, of, of Marta and, and, and uh, Manus. Marta and Manus, they, they're, they were huge in vaudeville, and they're, they're even bigger nowadays. Mike Barrett's out there. Great to see you, sir. And our own Donna. How are you? Wonderful to have you with us once more. And uh, I've got, you know, there's, there's a lot of equipment and gear involved in uh, television and show business in this modern age. And I've got, I've got a new piece of equipment, which is not unusual for uh, a Friday night. And I'm, we, I'll, I'll show you. I'll give you a little preview of this piece of equipment. It's it's right here. And uh, this one is uh, it's it's a in a sense it's a musical instrument by by any definition. Uh, this this is a uh, acoustic instrument. And uh, I'll give you a close look at it. This was, we acquired this as a, as a gift from uh, Reuse Action. They tear down houses and they find all kinds of, all kinds of things. And I, I, I told Kevin Hayes, you know Kevin Hayes from half of the coffee team of the Hayes brothers who have been sponsoring WBIG TV for years with their HayesHomeRoast.com uh, offering. You like Mike likes the split cam, very good, sir. I do too. How's the audio? It looks like I'm pegging the meter. Is it distorted? Is it sounding distorted when I'm too close to the mic? I think it'll be okay when I set it down. Looks like it's on full for crying out loud. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we're going to be using this. I'm not going to be using it as a musical instrument. This is a tool of crowd control. And, and you, I don't know, you might wonder, like, what kind of crowd control you need at a piano bar, sitting around, people sitting around the piano listening to ballads. But um, you'll see. Sometimes things get a little bit out of, a little bit out of the box. And... Uh, or you have to highlight an important point that somebody's making. You'll, you'll see. I, I've wanted one of these bells for years. And uh, tonight's the first night we have one. I'm going to play a little. Oops, I accidentally uh, deployed the bell. And I, it's kind of a hair trigger device. I'm going to move them around until we can get Bob Davis up here. Make yourselves comfortable and enjoy lounging with us. We'll enjoy lounging with you. show off thing I just did. We're broadcasting from the bowels of downtown Buffalo. Right in the heart of the uh, downtown government, business, and lounge district. us for the first time. Welcome. The great thing about Lounge Academy is is the producers don't tell me what to expect. 
So I don't know who the special guests are going to be. I don't know what show business people are going to be surprising us. It's all spontaneous here at Lounge Academy. But it could change in a, in a flash. The whole room could change. Herself for the first time. Now I want to make ribs. I want to get to be an expert at making ribs. They're really good. Why shouldn't I? It's my traditional opening number. Why? Why shouldn't I? Take a chance when romance passes by. Right, Gaia? Why?
I'd like to thank Guy Valeri for that song. <laughs> we're going to get to Gaia's request. We're going we're to wait to make her stick around, though, because we don't want her to leave. Ryan Walker's out there. Nice to see you, sir. Enjoy the lounge. tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a big axe coming up. Stay close to your sets tonight. We'll be here all night, so you can you can take lounge breaks from your routine whenever you want. Just click back to our window here, to my wall, and you'll be you'll be lounging just like that. He's taking the biggest, of course, biggest slice of pizza I've ever seen. You better take a break. A little intermission at the end of here. I'd like one uh, to go for, uh, for later. Then I'll, then I'll have one afterwards. It does. I see it. It says Lube Goldman. First one to hear that. I'm gonna be known as Lou Goldman someday. Terry's the first person that heard that. Because he understands these entrepreneurial things. That's beautiful. Yeah, so you up there by my uh, by bread holdings. That's great, Tina. We'll never starve with Tina around. I see another big star heading this way and he's He's got his new company vehicle that he's living big. They give him a car, an SUV. And he's, he's parked where the feds park. Joseph. I'd like to let a handsome Dan in, Terry. Tina's heading over to the. She, she, she loves the music. She spends all her time with live music. Better than this. Pizza Friday and music. Thank you, Gaia. This is a piano. This is a pizza piano. A piano pizza bar. Handsome Dan, ladies and gentlemen. We knew him when he was broke. Now he owns the world. Mary. Margaret Phillips is out there. How are you, Margaret Phillips? My cousin. I'm going to give you guys the split again. See, see now here, see how nice the shoulder is as the... Uh, not quite enough people yet for the shoulder yeah, cam. Nice and bright and stands out at the screen. This heart of mine was doing very well. The world was fine. As far as I could tell. Suddenly I met you and I dreamed of gay amour. I woke up singing sentimental overture. 
this heart of mine is dancing gaily now. I taste the wine. As long as life endures, it's yours, this heart of mine. Dave's here, ladies and gentlemen, the party can start. He's got his entourage. I like that shirt of that. Whatever the hell it is, I like it. look that good before, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see Dave Heisey, Mr. Show Business in the audience. How are you, sir? Suzanne's out there, too. She's a big lounge singer. Just ask Mark Murphy. as one Thank you. 
guitars that ring, ladies and gentlemen. It's Justine. She's in the house. I can't believe it. The home audience is in for a treat tonight. You are, Justine. She's already working the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, orange is her favorite color. She's going to have you in a Ford in about 10 seconds. Be careful, Tina. She's the world's best car salesman. We saw you out there, Justine. It got us, got us excited. Wow. Wow. How's it sound in a Ford? Fantastic. It's great. Maria. Maria Garage is in the audience. Pete's here. Yeah, Pete's really here, Mrs. Garage. Maria, Mrs. Garage is in the audience. Pete says. Hello, and he loves you very much. Misses you greatly. Here we go again. I hear those blow again. About to take that ride again. I'm going to ride again. Taking a chance, I'm going to go. They said the game was a frame up. I never could try. Now I'm taking that game up and the ace of hearts is high. Things are mending now. I see the rainbows blending now. I have the happy ending now. Taking a chance on love. Taking a chance on love. See the rainbows blending now. We'll have that happy ending now. We're taking a chance on love. Taking a chance on Jane. So great, Jane. You look like my cat tonight. I love it. Look that feline look with that, with that leopard skin. <laughs> I like it. Dan's taking a chance on heating and cooling. Here's one about moonbeams. I'm sentimental, so I walk in the rain. I've got some habits, even I can't explain. Could start for the corner and turn up in Spain. Why try to change me now? I'll sit and daydream. I've 
got daydreams go on. Cigarette ashes, there they go on the floor. I'll go away weekends and I'll leave the keys in the door. Why try to change me now? Why can't I be more conventional? People stare, people talk, so I try. But that's not for me. On a counter, I can't see my kind of crazy world. Go passing me by. So let people wonder, let them laugh, let them frown. You know I love you till the moon's upside down. Don't you remember I was always your clown? Why try to change me? Why try to change me? Why try to change me? Now? Oh, thank you, Tina. See? See what a great audience Tina is? Nice to see you. Yeah. I haven't been here for a while either. I know, that's great. It's about time. Well, it's lounge weather again. It's not summer anymore. Here's a song I'd like to... A song I'd like to know. This one goes out to Tina because she's such a good audience. You're always funny and it's sad.
had the craziest dream. Last night, yes, I did. I never dreamt it could be. But there you were, in love with me. I saw your lips next to mine. So I kissed them. You didn't mind it at all. When I'm away, such a break never happened. How long can a guy go on dreaming? wild night here at the Lounge Academy. We've got, it's like a Lounge Academy reunion here. So it's like a Lounge Academy reunion tonight, isn't it? No, that can't be it. The Gretsch. Don't let your wife find out. Watching Lounge Academy on WBIG TV with you and me. How about some comments out there from the home audience? Maybe some requests? Maybe you just want us to uh, say hi to one of your favorite lounge cadets? You might have a question or you might have an answer. It's nice to see Brendan out there. Mr. McCafferty, great to see you, sir. Sit back and relax. You're at the virtual piano lounge here. Dan says he doesn't mean to be re to be he's doing sales reports on his phone. Mary's gonna be up at the piano pretty soon. Oh, he's drinking or something. Anyway. Oh, that's, uh, oh, that's, uh, no, no, okay, I got that's Justine. Yeah, oh, that's, uh, that's Justine. Well, then she coming up. <laughs> if I mix them up, I'll be in real trouble. Paging Mary and Justine to the piano. They're being... Go, go get them and tell them that the home audience is requesting them. Gorgeous. They're cute at that age. Mary and Justine, we need you up here at the piano. The home 
home audience. We're losing them without Mary and Justine. They don't want to see me. Good job for getting the girls. Good charge of oh, all the piano. Thank you, sir. How's it going to visit? It's going great. Is there any here to buy? I, I could actually arrange that. I've got, I've got some outside. When I'm on my break, yeah. Well, we keep them cold, you know. They last longer that way. Very good. Oh, thank you. Talking. the piano. Okay, Gaia, don't go away. I just have to find the music for it, that's all. Sitting at the piano with people you might recognize up here from the Lounge Academy. Over my shoulder on my left, of course, is my co-host, Mary Kunz Golden. She's having an animated conversation with Justine Job. That was her hooting. And then to her left, my right, your right, is Handsome Dan. Familiar character to the Lounge Academy viewership. The mail it in every guy everybody is so like intent on I don't know what they're all talking about it's like they everyone here it's like they haven't met another human being in in 10 years it shows what an effective icebreaker a piano is these people act like they're long lost identical twins Gaia, I can't give you anything but love. Gaia, that's the only thing I've plenty of. My baby, dream a while, scheme a while, sure to find happiness and I'll guess. All those things we've always dreamed of. Gee, I'd hate to see you looking swell, my baby. Diamond bracelets, Woolworth doesn't sell, my baby. Till that bucky day, no darn well, 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 baby. I can't give you anything but love. Heating and cooling system. Nick and Kathy are here, ladies and gentlemen. Now the party can officially start. You can't have Lounge Academy without Nick and Kathy. Lucky day, you know darn well, well, Justine, I can't give you anything but pizza, and your voice, and your talent, and handsome dad. I'm going to put you back on the split so you can enjoy the split screen. What's up? What's up? Room packed with show business faces here tonight. Oh, yeah. Lounge Academy on WBIG TV. And that goes for the home audience too. It's an all show business 
personality night. Picture you upon my knee. Nice to see you, Nick. And two for tea. You for me. We're taking each other's pictures, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody near us to see us or hear us. I've never seen a room of people so in love with each other before. Here. It just has to be closer to me. You want me to move closer? Yeah. Oh. I probably should fill it too. No, it doesn't have to be full. I'll get drunk. It's full. Oh, goody. It's just a showbiz prop. Yeah, I know. And then we'll take advantage of it. Thanks, Tina. You're welcome, sweetheart. Justine, a girl for me. Can't you see how happy we will be in our Ford? What's How is the world treating you, Dan? You haven't changed a bit. Lovely to see you. I must admit. How did that romance come through? We haven't met since then. Gee, but it's great to see you again. What's new? But seeing you is grand, and you were great to offer your hand. I understand, I do. Hardly asking what's the I haven't changed God still on the snow. Show business legend Ray Emmerman walked through the lounge. Say hello to Electra's son, David. It's always great having you out there, I'm sure. Here's one for Kathy Moses.
tell you, this room's having their own party. See what happens? It's like a reunion of people that were trapped on an island together. same people so happy to see each other and I don't even think half of them know each other it's the magic of lounge piano isn't it isn't that what this is all about the whole lounge academy experience Jane Tina's paying attention I told you she pays attention Some new material out here. Here's one. I always hear this on. I always think of a telethon when I hear this song. Oh, thanks, Gaia. I, me too. Yeah, I agree with that. This is the best place to be. Gaia, I always think of. Uh, I always think of a telethon when I hear this song. Like the. For some reason, like they're gonna wheel somebody out. On a clear day, rise and look around you, and you see I'm for you, I 
body and soul. That's not it. My wife will wreck your making. Now I'm yours for just the taking. Darling, I love you. I'm all for you, body and soul. I don't know the bridge. You fucked away. the taking if I could have just one more with you yeah. my wife a wreck you're making for just the taking I gladly surrender For Justine. Great request. Thanks, Justine. It's another cheerful song. This one's for Kathy Bishop and Bruce Sanders. Ready, Kathy Bishop? Your eyes don't shine like they used to shine. And the thrill is gone when your lips, when your lips touch mine. I'm afraid the masquerade is, it's over. And so is love. And so is love. No words, your words don't They're just routine. I'm afraid the masquerade is over. And so is love. And so is love. Yes, I'll have to play Hayachi and get myself a clown's disguise and learn to laugh like Hayachi. I'm afraid 
the masquerade is over And so is love And so is love The masquerade is over or just in time for Halloween. The masquerade should just be starting, right? Right, Joan? Jane and Dave? All big celebrities. It's nice to see Kathy out here. Dave's here. You never know what's going to happen next. Thank you, sir. I threw it with his pen. If you find it in one of the books, I believe somebody pulled it out of the books. Uh, Recently, I believe we do have it. I don't know which one though. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll find it for Dave. Or is Steve coming up, ladies and gentlemen? One of my flight engineers is going to find it. Let's see what else we got here tonight. We'll get to that one, David. All right. Oh, we'll have, we got people to do that, David. You, you work the room. Try to meet some of these people, right? Yeah, these people, I think everybody met each other. You already did a kiss and such a kiss. I know you did. Earlier, I heard that. We didn't do this one yet. Why did I wander here and there and yonder, wasting precious time for no reason or rhyme? Isn't it a pity? Isn't it a crime? My journey's ended, everything is splendid. Meeting you today has given me a wonderful idea. Here I stay. It's a funny thing. I look at you. I get a thrill. I never knew. Isn't it a pity we never met before? Here we are at last. It's like a dream. The two of us
will say to me, isn't it a pity we never met before? Another nice skirsh went to They, they write. They, I, I haven't read. I haven't heard half their songs. It's amazing how prolific they were for such an early age. When you hear them, is when you play them. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's not like you're going to turn on KB. What a great voice that guy has. When I'm listening to somebody else, yeah. This song. <laughs> Thanks, Gaia. Mike Duffy, nice to see you, sir. Mike's up on a roof watching somewhere. Don't fall off. How our dreams came true. 
how did we become so smart? And learn to break each other's hearts. Look how our dreams came true. See how I've got me. Love. Something deep inside You and me We weren't like the rest We once were the best Look what we've become Isn't it a crying shame That we almost made it, but we weren't it at all. Maybe you and me, we weren't it at
I like playing for show business people so much. Because art, artists understand the pain of the creative process. It's true. That's why they're the best audience to have. Writers, it's all showbiz. Right? You're right. They're all, they're all talented. It's a room full of talent. Of every dimension. Of another dimension. It's a dimension not just of sight and sound, but of lounge piano. Here's another one to go along with the last one. This goes along good with it. It's from one, one of the two. Two movies. One million before we lost them in the tragic plane crash at war. someone you're passing on the streets every day and they, they might 
have a thing for you. You know? You know, how many people just keep it quiet, you know, because the time just isn't right? It isn't the right lifetime for it. Right? Might surprise you. Right? This is called in show business in the industry. This is called flipping through the book. Notice the left hand is flipping, the right hand is stabbing at random chords. Just trying to pick out just the right, the right songs for the special nights. There's so many. Here's the song we need, Terry. They all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said the world was round. They all laughed at a soon recorded sound. They get back to him. They all laughed at Wilbur and his brother. When they said that men could fly, they told Marconi wireless was phony. It's the same old cry. They laughed at me. What did you? Said I was reaching for the moon. Oh, they came through. Now they have to change their tune. They all said we never could be happy. They all laughed at us and how. But ho, 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 who's got the last laugh now? They're laughing. Laughing in their beer. They all laughed at Rockefeller. Now they're fighting to get in. They all laughed at Whitney and his cotton gin. They all laughed at Fulton and his steamboat. Ford and his Lizzie kept the laughters busy. That's how people are. They laughed at me, wanting you. Said we're reaching the goodbye. But oh, you came through. Now they're eating humble pie. They all said we never could be together. Darling, let's take a bow. For ha ha ho, who's got the last laugh now? Who's got the last donut now? Who's got the last roll of paper now? Jane's paying attention. What's doing very well? This heart of mine was doing very well. The world was fine, as far as Justine could tell. Suddenly I met you, and I dreamed of Guillermo. When I woke up singing sentimental overture, this heart of mine is dancing gaily now. I taste the wine of real romancing now. This crazy world has taken out a wonderful design. This one 
long as life endures, it's yours, this not mine. ones I wanted to be able to go to. When I, I put them in there when I was playing at the uh, at E.B. Green's for Jocko. So I went, I went through and I stuck post-it notes in just to, to help me out. I forgot about them. They kind of wore out. They must be good songs. I can't see they don't work right. Wow, we haven't done this one in a long time. It is about time. Let's see if we can remember this one, Kathy Moses. This is a real old chestnut, 1930. I'll see my dreams 
come true. Moments to spare for someone you care for. One love affair. I'm on my hands, you in my arms, and love in my arms, for you. 1930, Vincent Gomez. Love and feeling 
like someone feeling like someone in love, someone in love. I'm in love, so I'm feeling in love, and I'm feeling warm, around Academy, with you and me, and Kathy Moses. Thank you. Coming out by special request. That's one I'm working up for a special engagement that's coming up. Well, it's kind of has to do with has to do with Ryan getting hitched. President of WBIG TV. It's a great night here. It's a great night here at Lounge Academy. Now, I have not used the new tool yet. I have not needed it, I'm, I'm happy to say. That it has not had to be called into service tonight, so we'll just hope it stays that way. Here's one another. Here's one for Kathy. We haven't done this one in a while. Day in, day out. The same old movie follows me about. The same old pounding in my heart. Someone to watch over me. What's the name of that song you do? Hmm? Somebody loves me. We did that one. Here we go. This goes out by request. This, goes out. this is for Terry. He knows it's rainy. I might have to sniff some helium. Which is no problem. I keep some back here. 
There's a saying old says that love is blind. Still, we're often told, seek and ye shall find. So I'm going to seek a certain that I've had in mind. Good thing I finished the sentence there. Looking everywhere, haven't found him yet. He's a big affair, I cannot forget. Only man I ever think of with regrets. I like to add his initials to my monogram. <laughs> we don't want the sheep, we want the shepherd. This lost lamb takes on a whole different meaning. Then you get into uh, that other guy's territory. Dr. John Belby. There's a somebody I'm longing to see. I hope that he turns out to be. Someone to watch over me. I'm a little lamb who's lost in the woods. I know I could always be good to one who Think of as handsome. My heart he carries the key. Won't you tell him, please, to put on some speed? Follow my lead. Oh, how I need someone. Nice request, Terry. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Oh, we're talking about Howard. Now, Howard, do you lead into the Donut Tuesday? Do I? Do I what about Donut Tuesday? Lead into? Lead into? Donut Tuesday. Donut Tuesday. It's right around the corner from Niagara Square downtown. Get your whole donuts. On a con, it's Lard Tuesday. Excellent donuts. Thank you. Tina's a great donut. Uh, Aficionado. She is. She's my favorite customer. She's a delivery man. She does it all. Some people have it all. What's it called again? So in love. Here's another good one. We got a big act coming up. Here you go, Nick. 
It's uh, it's at the 909, one after 909. Bob Maggio, fantastic singer, is out in the audience. Here you go, Bob. Here's a special singer for you here at Lounge Academy. When he started out at Lounge Academy, uh, when, when was that? 81 years ago? He couldn't sing at all. And you should wait till you hear him. This is his jury exam right now. That's a new Nick record. That was good, wasn't it? Yes, very good. I mean, I'm looking at the music critic. All right, there's a time. Because she's the only one that officially counts when it comes to. Okay, she gave it a thumbs up. You can live, Nick. Aww. Yet another day. Now, who was the the white ponytail that was behind the piano? Maybe, uh, Ryan, maybe the president could. Uh, Maybe turn the heat down a little bit. You played last Friday. I'm sorry to interrupt. You played last Friday. Maybe it's getting warmer on there. Yes, you did. I could probably watch it on the TV. Matt 
Dennis in this song. I've got a crush. Here's one, here's one for Gaia in the Odd Outs Lounge Cadet in the uh, TV land. Oh, good. It's called I've Got a Crush on You. It has a verse. You guys know the verse? How glad the many millions of Annabelle's and Williams would be to capture me. But you had such persistence, you broke down my resistance. I fell, and it was swell. You're my big and brave, it's Roman Romeo. I shall never know. It's not that you're attractive. Oh, my heart grew active when you came into view. I've got a crush on you. I never had the least bit notion that I could fall with so much emotion. Darling, I know so well. I've got you 
under my skin. Sacrifice anything, come what may, for the sake of having you near. In spite of the warning's voice, comes in the night and repeats in my ear. Don't you know it'll go? You never could win. Use your mentality. Wake up to reality. But each time I do, just the thought of you makes me stop before I begin. I got to, I've got to, I've got you under my skin, subcutaneously, subcutaneous you. Thank you. Paul Porter, he knew how to write a song. Yeah. I think Frank wrote one song. What was the one song, Frank? Didn't Frank Sinatra write one song? Is he, doesn't he get credit on one? I can't remember what it What? Bob? Let's Google it. Yeah, I thought he did. I mean, he wasn't a songwriter, but he, he rewrote them. He interpreted them. He made, a lot of songs were written for him. Same thing with uh, Fred Astaire. He and Fred Astaire had the most songs written for them, I think. It's true. It's true. Here's one that uh, Jerry Lewis did. The Nutty Professor. Here's the great farm sensation, Nutty Love. No, I wish I could. I bet you have that Bob Davis does it with Jerry Lewis. Bob Davis, is Jerry Lewis around here? Is he? if Bob Davis, have you seen Jerry Lewis around somewhere? I thought I saw him. Up at dawn and sleepy and yawning, still the taste of wine. It's uh, so in love. Yeah. Up at dawn and sleepy and yawning, still the taste of wine. Then I remember your mind and I've got a world that's fine. What's before me, routines that bore me, punch the clock at eight. But what a lucky guy I am, I've got a world that's great. Adam Bounds, Cape Canaveral and false alarms, half the universe is up in arms. So I flip a little too until I'm holding you. What's the hassle? I'll buy the castle. We can live like kings. If you remember your mind, then I've got a world that you've got a world that we got a world that swings. I'd like to take you on a wide one adventure, fly like a kite from space, no strings. I don't want to lose that bell that rings. Cause I've got a world that swings. I've got the world on a string. Sitting on a rainbow, tied the string round my finger. String reminds me of mine and that I've got a world that swings. Adam Bounds, Cape Canaveral and false alarms. Half the universe is up in arms. So I flip a little too until I'm holding you. What's the hassle? I'll buy the castle. We can live like kings. Remember your mind then I've got a world that you've got a world that we got a world that swings a world that swings Nick we've got a world that swings what do you love he was the greatest known presentation Kenny Howard my name is Mallory nice to meet you
sorry. I'll do my best. Yeah. Let's see if we, if we can find the music I can. That's a beautiful song. You'll see, Nick. Keep your pants on. You're gonna like this. This is gonna be a big. This is gonna be a big number. Is it? Is it? I only have I three, or is it only a I three? I only. I. 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 I think we do. Yes. It's in. It's in here. Where did Lori go? I knew I was dreaming. I had the craziest dream last night. Yes, I did. Oh, she is real. I'll do everything you want as long as we can do it in C. Gaia, put on your seatbelt. Do you have any reefer? Do I have any reefer? Reefer. That too. Oh, reefer. No, reefer. No, I don't. You can't adjust it. No, I don't have any. Okay, so okay, it's just straight up. So we have to make it echo. Yeah, it's a big open a few more doors. Here. <laughs> Well, everyone's talking about Canada lately. Freudian slips through. I knew this was all too good to be true. <laughs> El Capola. <laughs> Diana Krall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's time. I'll, I'll, I'll follow you through the verse and then we'll go into time. You know. I have no idea. Okay. okay. I've never done this before. Yeah, I know. I know, oh, I know that I isn't true. So no, got, really. She's got a chart app on her iPhone. She's never, like Bob Davis. <laughs> Certainly the second person. I've never done this like piano or anything. Oh, that's all right. That's, that's why it's called Lounge Academy. <laughs> this is where we try to put it together. Okay, we'll yeah. try. Yeah.
Lounge and Lounge Academy on WBIG TV. I'm just glad I haven't had to use this yet tonight. <laughs> I just got this, a new piece of equipment. I know people are afraid to ask about it. It's a, um, I've wanted one of these for years. The part right here. It's to maintain order. You'll see. You'll see. Actually, there was one or two, once or twice during the evening when I, I, I forgot. See, I'm not used to it yet. Bob, you want to play a few songs for us over here tonight? You can we coax? Well, I'd, well, I'd love to take a break and listen to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a special treat for you tonight at Lounge Academy. Bob Davis is he's, he's a little bashful. Which which is a real quirk of human nature, you know. This guy, he's, a, he's just a total pro in more than one field. He's a, he's a pro a magician. He's a magician professionally. And he's a musician professionally. And he's just fantastic. And he's played with the best people in, in the largest venues. And I've seen him get up. Uh, get called out of the crowd and jazz clubs where it's, I mean, I, I'd be terrified. And he's just, you know, sales. But, but on Lounge Academy, there's something about, he gets bashful. Maybe because Guy is watching. Uh, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be hard to follow me. I mean, got nothing to work But he likes to slip in without any attention or fanfare. You know, he wants, he wants, like, you know, everybody be talking, he slips in and just starts playing like nobody's going to notice. He, of course, they they stop and listen because he's amazing. So, very quietly, we're going to introduce Bob Davis. The people are watching. Get this out of here. Get that kid out of here. Let's go and Howard.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
he was only going to do the beating if he knew the preservation of the Niagara was going to attack. So everything was contingent on them confirming if they would attend the meeting. And I, I went back and forth with the executive director, who kept saying, oh yeah, I'll contact you. And then she never would. And then I didn't keep following up with her. And she dumped my email. And it was just like she gave me a runaround. So we had this great strategy. Um, and then it sort of fell apart. For some reason, dragging their feet. I see. But, you know, it was very clear, you know, that Mark, when I was dealing with Mark, he was very strategic. Yeah, like a general. Yeah, so I could appreciate that. He also told me that, like, nine months before the news came out, it was even public, that the Bachelor Building was under threat. He knew what Paladino's had planned because he found out. And he told me he contacted Tim Tillman to say, you know, you better get on this. And Tim Tillman never got back to him. So that's one of the big problems with anything involving preservation of Buffalo is all the preservation people are disorderly, disorganized in a business life that a lot of times have their heads over their asses. And it's very frustrating. Yeah. Well, it's a basically a volunteer thing, right? A volunteer army? Well, you know, there's some people who work for, like, the Bishop of Luna But, you know, if you know, the director, she makes promises, and then when you try to get her to follow through, she, she ducks your emails and won't do it. And then it's like, what are you supposed to do? Already, because as soon as the convention center options were announced, and one of the options was demolishing this block, and this block was clearly in the survey that was done five years ago of the city that showed, hey, what's eligible for preservation, what isn't, and this block is readily eligible. I see. Um, you know, so you think that the preservation community would be like, you know, getting them some motion. Yeah. I'm not hearing anything. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't, uh, they don't seem to be too, I was, I was kind of wondering, thinking, you know, I don't know that much about them, but, um, I was wondering, like, like if things had been different, I announced, like, if I I put a bulldozer in front of my house and went in and got like a demo permit, they they kick ass. I think they need somebody, you know, they need somebody they could focus on, and maybe they don't want to focus on Paul's house, right? You know, or maybe he's not the guy to focus on. It, it, I just assume he's the point man because he's the one that's taking credit for the whole thing and announcing it. And it sounds like his baby, you know. It's his baby. So maybe it has been from the beginning. You know, maybe they, maybe they, they're okay with. Do they like him? And I like him. I, you know, it's been over to my house and stuff. You know, I mean, I felt kind of bad when he didn't give us. No, at our, our other house. Oh, um, years no, years ago. Not. Yeah, I mean, we all know, you know, everyone knows each other in this town. And um, when we run into him, I mean, he, he knows our names and we have a lot of fun just joking around. So, so, so I mean, I, I don't have, you know, but, uh, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you know, Maybe that's part, could that be part of the dynamic? I mean, I only know like two pieces, so I, I can only make assumptions based on like seeing two pieces of the puzzle, you know? And it seems like if, like, like if when uh, the Atwater house was being torn down for a parking lot, they went ape shit. I don't know if it was the same people. I know preservationists in general, like 
did a really good job of almost saving that thing. Right. And uh, they're, they're not igniting like they did uh, for this. You know, I, I, I know people like this building, you know, but, um, you know, it could, it could be they have to have a, somebody that's worthy to, like, fight. You know, it's a, it's a good point. I can, I can see that being the case with Preservation of Buffalo Niagara, where their approach would be to talk to the county and try to work the issue behind the scenes. But with the, on the Tim Tillman side, I can... Good night, Nick Moses. Oh, no problem. It's so good to talk to you. I'd like to say hello to Michelle Tripper. We're at the uh, final act of Lounge Academy here. It's, it's only suiting, suiting, suitable, suiting. That's Tripper is here. Bye, Kathy. If I look at Kathy, Again, on, um, I did notice when, when I threw that um, link to my group on the year thing there. Yeah. Um, oh no, I went to, um, I found out about the Buffalo Niagara. The, and so I went to that page, Preservation. preservation. Yeah. And I, um, did a did a post just to tell us you know saying this it, it was for it was it, it was it's a group that's for it says in the instructions it's only for at risk properties oh preservation ready sites probably maybe, maybe that was it yeah so I um I said here's what at risk and I put the address and I put enough you know information mm -hmm. and then you know they all they had no, Whoever they are, I don't know who these people are, but they were, um, they, some of them, I mean, sound like they're activists, you know, they sound pretty serious, and they're going, what, this is awful, no way we'll let that happen, you know, so it's like they didn't even know. Um, so, that's part of it, too, is I, I just assumed everybody, like, is wired together, you know? You, you, yeah, I I mean, it was on the news, I figured, you know. Right. Ideally, that's how it would work. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Well, what's with the Grand Hotel? How come no, everybody's just blowing that off like it's a non thing. I can see why people that want 400 million would blow it off. He's, he's like Bashar Issa too. If I, if I put this book in Well, Bashar, Bashar built some big buildings, you know. I mean, this guy had a success in Toronto, didn't he? He's about to get yeah, smart. It's questionable. Is, is but but the fact is, is, I mean, they're 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 gambling. If you were going to invest four hundred million of your own money, just to give a little different perspective, if anybody was. Okay, but if somebody was going to invest, like say say the that the county convention center was a public offering, it was a oh, private. I see what you're okay. Yeah. And we're we're thinking you and I we're, we're all thinking gee you know should we maybe we should buy some stock in this thing or for our portfolio you know and you and you look at the numbers and you think well gee Mark Polenkai that sounds pretty good it sounds like you know it's going to be a long term thing but it's sounds like it's going to make some money and then all of a sudden you find out Harry is already like building something that he claims is going to be the size of a large convention center that they're after. You'd want to know like all about that to know like because that's going to throw off all the all the sale the revenue numbers. You know, if you got to split the business with him at, for any degree, is he going to have 
conventions for 100 people, or is he going to have them for 100,000? You know, I mean, whatever he's doing there, or, you know, is he going to go broke? Is he not going to go? I mean, these are the, Warren Buffett would be studying that real closely if he was buying, investing in something that's going to be competing with it. So with $400 million deal, I'm just surprised. I could see why the people on the side of the $400 million, they want their hands on it, like the bed tax and stuff. They're not going to want to know anything about it because they can't lose, they can only gain no matter what happens. But, you know, but, but, but the deal could be a big loser if there's a competing site, right? I, I agree they should be looking at it. But, you know, I mean, the way a lot of people view various types of kids, like, they'll look at it when they see it, just because he's got that kind of track record. How, how many people thought Coachy was going to wind up doing something with the sailor? I don't know. They thought he was, they were calling him a, a cook and a parking lot attendant. Big people, people I know that that really you know, have like big holdings, you know, that should know better. You know? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so I mean, you get you, you got people have to do their own homework, you know. I know some people have done that. Too. You know, I agree with you. I mean, he's over there. He's building right. Building something. They, they, they should be looking at it. I, I agree with that. But I know people who are on their own country. They just. I mean, even if it fails, it's going to be open. Or it's probably going to be open. But even, even if he goes. Until it fails. If, if he stumbles, the next guy picks it up and we're it's, it's, Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a completed convention center potentially. Yeah. Good point. They'll just buy it cheaper, like Mark bought the Staller cheaper. And then the numbers work even better. Yeah, you get it out of bankruptcy court, and all of a sudden it makes a lot of sense. That whole situation with the sale of Ohio's by Brady's I mean, there were all kinds of rumors circulating around. At one point, at one point, the Western New York America world was looking at home examples. See, it had a note on it, though. There was a mortgage on it. Right. So, so, so it was hard to just... Whatever they did it had, to, had to go through, it had to be approved by the court. It had to go, it had to pass through bankruptcy. Right. It had to be approved by the bankruptcy court. Yeah. So some of, the, some of these ideas that got floated were just, like, wacky. And it's like, everybody's forgotten about and then there was there was the whole thing with like Andy Rudnick, Andy Rudnick saying, "Oh, well, we should just tear it down." I mean, yeah, a lot of yeah. Well, anybody, yeah, I don't know why he would, but anybody that wanted to compete with it for space wanted it to be either mothballed or, or torn down. It makes sense. Nine hundred thousand feet. Yeah, it's like. We're here at Lounge Academy. We're for those still up. We're we're talking we're, about Andrew Rudnick. 
We're here with Ra Cha Cha. We're we're finding out <laughs> the back the backstory to things that are happening in <laughs> Buffalo and have happened. <laughs> we're finding out the backstory to things that happened seven years ago that nobody cares about anymore. Yeah, yeah, we're live. <laughs> it's Jane, ladies and gentlemen. Christmas on what year? It could be. We'll see. Who's out there? We'll see. Say, say hello to us. Say. Oh yeah, Howard. Say hi if you're out there, and I know you. A lot of us were background noise. For you don't have to stop what you're doing if it's not uh, convenient. We'll understand. Then I met you. That's a different song. <laughs> How incredibly. <laughs> and your face would stop a clock. <laughs> so You're pretty I, good at this. I no longer knew what time it was. <laughs> Two L's or an A? Two A's. Uh, one L. One L, two A's? Two A's. And a partridge in a pear tree. Yes. <laughs> Three French names. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully this whole thing will blow over, right? This whole thing of destroying this block. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's really hard to say. I mean, it's the kind of thing where I think the reason Mark Polencar is doing this is because he got assurances from the governor yeah, that the governor would pony up for a convention center. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, it could end up being like one of those governor projects where the governor marches in and says, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do it here, and you're going to just smile and be happy about it. That's what, <laughs> that's what concerns me. Would a local landmark uh, work against the state? Well, um, it's a little bit of a well, a local a landmark you know, means the preservation board That's is supposed to decide whether something can be torn down or not, okay. whether it's state or the developer. But you know, the state, the state law says that you're not supposed to use state funds to demolish historic resources. So. If it's if it's register eligible for the state and federal historic registers, then the state is supposed to have to go through hoops in order to demolish it or impact it. That's if it's even eligible. But, but a local local doesn't protect uh, from the state. Well, a local protects from anything because it has to go through. It has to have a vote of the preservation board. And so if the preservation board doesn't vote, votes not to approve it, then, I mean, the city council could override, but then... What about, uh, but then the, like a know, federal courthouse? People, people could file a lawsuit against them. Um, but if it's, if, it's a, if it's a state project and they're going to use state money to demolish something that's, like, state register eligible... Even if it's not on the state list, if it's state el register eligible, it's still considered a historic resource that you're not supposed to you're not supposed to impact. Then people could file a lawsuit, like it, in Article se Article seventy eight, which is, you know, government acting inappropriately, basically, and they could file that in state court, like the state state appellate court here locally. That that's kind of that's kind of how all that works. I see. So you know, a large part of it is is it is it is it even eligible for the state 
historic register. And, I mean, it's already determined in that survey that was done five years ago that the block, I mean, the part of the block that they said is eligible doesn't include your building. It includes, like, you know, the stuff along Franklin Street. I see. And then the, the blue building south of you. But, y you know, I mean, it, that, that, that could that's still... Nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> not, we're the oldest building. The blue building, yeah, that's not a building at this point. No, it's 1961. Yeah, it, that's probably... It's international yeah. <laughs> We're 1861. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. We're before that. Yeah, we're before that. No kidding. And it's the last vestige of the block from what it was, you know. Wow. Yeah. Before, you know, a hundred and fifty years ago. It used to be all mansions along Delaware Avenue. You know, big it houses, you know, it's I don't know if you go in mansions there in that photo. It was, it was a lot like Rich sort of like Richmond Avenue. Except yeah, with even kind of like oh, yeah. Richmond Avenue. Probably nicer than Richmond. Houses. But with yeah. bigger houses. Yeah. 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 Oh, right but it was that kind road. of thing. It was actually, this was actually designating one of the Olmstead Parkways. Because really? Delaware Avenue was supposed to connect Niagara oh. Square oh. with Delaware Park. Oh, that makes sense. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it wasn't until the 1920s. <laughs> in the 1920s, the, the early 1920s, the Statler was built. Okay. And when the Statler was built, yeah, that, no, started, house came down. that started a whole real estate speculation oh. all up and down Delaware Avenue. Oh. And all of a sudden... You, and also there was more traffic and you know this area became more commercial downtown became more commercial and less residential so what happened was the old money families that used to live along Delaware yeah. they started selling and moving north mm -hmm. and then a lot of these houses were torn down for commercial buildings um, or some of them were added onto in the front mm -hmm. for commercial buildings yeah but but some of the, if, if you read some of the articles from like the 1920s yeah, yes. where they interviewed the developers, some of the developers were actually saying, we want to make Delaware Avenue like the Fifth Avenue yes. of Buffalo. Oh. I see. And yeah, the business. Even, even down to like the well, Indiana Limestone that. that they were using on a lot of the buildings. Oh. Because, you know, Indiana Limestone became big because it was used on Fifth Avenue in New York City. And it sort of displaced, you know, the old brownstone, yeah. sandstone that had been used. The Medina sandstone. Or yeah, or the, or the local oh. brownstone. And so, you know, switching to Indiana limestone was like a sign of sophistication and a sign of, like, putting the old brown decades behind you. Yes. And, you know, you're, you're into the sophisticated times. So that stretch that does look like it has brownstones, like... Virginia or Edward. Oh, yeah, Midway the there. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you know what time period those went in? You, you mean that stretch of... Um, Delaware? Yeah, where they have the row houses. Like yeah, where they have the row houses. Yeah. Well, well, that's kind that's of... That's New York City-ish. Yeah. Right? We only have that one strip of it. Yeah. Yeah, but but that, that was all part of, like, the pre-1920s street. Oh. And, you know, some of that stuff up in Allentown didn't get demolished. Like the stuff, or the, like the stuff downtown. Okay. Some of it did, but some of it was left. Mm -hmm. And but then once you get to North Street, that's when you know you're back to like mansions and houses. Right. It's kind of how it was. Um, you know, fortunately, I mean, there were proposals like in the 1970s to take down a bunch of those mansions uh -huh. to like build a headquarters for IBM. Oh, surprised that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the things that must have gone from main place mall in that convention center. <laughs> oh, yeah, what was there? Was there a main place mall? I remember yeah. my father used to have it fits about it when I was a kid, and now I can see why. I mean, I didn't quite understand it, but there's buildings that went for those failed projects. <laughs> really? Oh, big things came down. Yeah, I remember. Oh, and my father was very undone about when the library, when the central library, which now kind of, kind of has a cachet of its own because it's from the 60s, but when that, oh, that, that replaced the old, yeah. that old yeah. massive library, my dad said that 
the you know, people, the preservationists at the time were trying to get them at least to save the gargoyles and they wouldn't from oh, the old place. Everything got smashed. Not even smashed. the gargoyles. Not even the gargoyles. It was awful. It was heartbreaking. Your father was my teacher in high school. Really? Yeah. Oh, man, he wouldn't remember you, yeah. Dave. If he was around, anyone could remember Dave. How old oh, was he when he died? If you wore this shirt to school, I didn't know that. Ever. How old was he when he died? Or was he was yeah. 71. I knew, yeah, I, okay, I knew he yeah. I thought he was about 70, yeah. Yeah, he was 71. But anyway, he used to have fits over, and another th these ornate buildings, I know there, was, uh, there were a few of them that went down for Main Place Mall. Very ornate, old, beautiful things, mm -hmm. you know, and for this thing. What in the world is going on with Main Place Mall? <laughs> anyway, it just sits there. How come they don't make that the convention center? Yeah. <laughs> That's what people kept saying there. on Buffalo it's, Rising. I'll just put it in Main Place Yeah, Mall. I think I saw it there. There's nothing going yeah. on with Main Place Mall. It just sits there. Could I rent a store front there? <laughs> I don't know. Who's, it big who's, enough? who's oh, yeah. in charge of it? You, you could rent a store there. It, isn't the mall big, it's big, bigger than the convention center? It is. Um, it just... The problem is it doesn't have enough square footage yeah. for the times for the size exhibit hall that the county wants. Oh, I just, it's not even close. Why not just put it out in Teach a Walk by the airport? How about that? That's, that's a, a good, good idea. idea. Yeah, it is a good yeah. idea. How about just put it out in Teach a Problem solved. Well, because then you don't have the, ho you know, the hotels and yeah. you know, all the things. That's well, we got hotels out there. <laughs> just find an old two guys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Boston, he's out there oh, listening to. We're doing talk about preservation. The, the preservation writer, Ra Cha Cha. Ed Lawson? Hello, Ed. But it's only saying that they have. George Apple. He knows a thing or two. George Apple's out there? Mary Kate O'Connell passed. Oh, you saw it there, Mary Kate? Hey, George. Ron Reinhardt. About time, Bill. Where you been all night? We're here in the epilogue of Lounge Academy. You probably have to go through Chicago or something. Yeah. 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 Oh, we got to Rochester. Unless they've remodeled, my my name is actually scratched in the wall of the House of Guitars. Oh, your name. That's my name. Wow. Unless they re. Well, there's not albums around that center thing anymore. It's books. I don't think anything has changed in carpeting or anything, which gives it its appeal. That looked the same to me last time. That's a real institution, though. Rochester can be proud of House of Guitars. We don't have the equipment. Other than that one room we got in the house. <laughs> yeah, that one room. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Dr. Academy tonight, Mr. President. I was at a summit. A summit? Yes. Okay. Like on the summit of a great pit? <laughs> I was at a, a summit of librarians. Wow. Did they let their hair down? Uh, sure. You know, the old thing about the librarians, you know, they're real uptight looking, you know, and then they undo their, their hair, hair and the hair down comes down, all of a sudden it's like, wow. I'm not sure I'll be able to get back in. Get a that. I'm going to go fetch the car and bring it around, and will I be able to get back in? I think if the no. doorman is there. No? No, we're not going to let you get back in. Oh, right. We're going to well, keep Jane. Will you? It's great having David here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Talk about interesting guests. We get them all here, right? That's why we had to get this bell. We only had to use it once tonight. GT. Did you see, Howard, that we have cartoons for each one of the sandwiches? I saw them and admired them. I haven't read the cartoons yet. Oh, yeah. I was consuming a sandwich. And now that David's a published cartoonist. Which came first, the chicken or the egg salad? That's a cartoon that's in the sandwiches, ladies and gentlemen, by David. Then we have the hummus sandwich. And then hum, well, this one you'd have to kind of see it. This one, the, the matter speaks for itself. What's the Latin for that? The matter speaks for itself. But then now we have the we have a canned salmon sandwiches, and so here's a cartoon for this. We are the salmon family of Beverly Hills. We are the canned salmon family from the Alabama swamp. Were there two kinds? So well, we only have canned salmon here tonight. No locks. We don't have any Beverly Hills salmon. I'm sorry. That's, that's okay. It was whatever it was. It was good. Yeah. Jane made those. Good, good going, Jane, on those sandwiches. I love the, I love the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, the, a little wax paper. It's nice. It's easy to grab them and yeah. Your hands clean. Right. What is that? Is that deli paper? Regular cut right wax paper. Huh? If oh, I could have uh, thought fast, I would have thought of something very uh, I'm gonna, posh. I'm gonna put you guys on split view, ladies and gentlemen. So it's like, it'll be like being here, see? You can look around the room. This is the behind the scenes stuff that people normally don't see because they're not here. Are people still up watching your show this evening? Yeah, they are. People are still checking in. You know, they must have very exciting Friday nights. <laughs> hey! <laughs> well, how do you beat this? This is the best. Jeepers! This, no, this is the best. It is. They came out wrong. <laughs> this is the best. We know what you meant. Oh, those are beautiful rubber maids. Oh, those rubber maids are for them. Are those dollars? If they'd like them. Oh, oh I'd like them. I used to get not kill for those. You don't have to kill anything. Look at that, Ryan. Are those dollar store rubber maids? Tops. I don't think Dollar Store has them this big because they have to charge more than a buck. Well, Tops had a buy one, get one, and it was two in each one, so it was actually four. So I have one, and you can have three. Brian, were you aware of that deal? <laughs> no, I was not. <laughs> Jane's good. <laughs> that was not a plug for Tops, by the way. It was just that. That's okay, state. you know, Tops. We like to plug Tops. Tops, Tops is a good company. They don't stop saving you more. Tops the place that single people used to go <laughs> to try to pick each other up. That's wet. You'll see it here. Okay, yes. Yeah, so tops never mops. mops. Look at the uh, doors. Yeah. Tops you. never mops? Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I, I find that hard to believe. Tops never mops. Well, it rhymes. Do you uh, put these somewhere? Do you leave them around your coasters? Yeah, Howard, yeah I'll just leave them there. I'm the chauffeur, and I've been summoned to go get the car. Oh, okay, David. So, pleasure to 
seat again. You've never been summoned you. to get the car. Enjoy you and Are you offered to get the car? I see to bring your whole entourage. That's not very nice people. Actually, I offered to get the car. I was not summoned. And I'm not sure if you heard him say that he was just thank you for that. You're welcome. I didn't even know Rock Ra Cha was here all night. I didn't even know he was Ra Cha Cha. Um, there is a Dana. I figured he was. I thought he was. I thought he was one of your friends. Dana. Ra Cha Cha. No, don't know. Yeah, I I know him, but I, I didn't know who he was until I got talking to him, and it's like, oh, because we know each other real well. I mean, online, you know, I'm. Oh, no kidding. For years. Really? Yeah. I'm I've, sure. I've met him in a couple times. Well, that's why he's here. I didn't even know. I'm him sure, because yeah. he, you know. But to he, not he see us, him he, in person. He owed us a visit, but I didn't, he didn't say he was coming. And he's one of these guys, you know, like people just have like, a, I don't know what you use on like Facebook or on places he writes in. He, his face is never, you know, it's like someone they have like their poster or their hat. Oh. And then you and then you run into them and it's always awkward because okay. you know the person but you have no idea what they look like. Mm -hmm. That's what happens with them. I didn't know you were here. I've gone Christmas again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I joined our Christmas carol. Where's your Christmas carol? See, see what she does? Well, you were playing the piano and there was a lot of people coming in. What does she do? Uh, I don't, what I don't did know. you do? Just so terrific. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about Christmas tree. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that. This is going to be a good year for you. Oh, it's so much fun. Just, you want to do it? Yes. Oh, it's fun. I don't have to and stay next to anybody. I can be way out. Oh, of the we got Jane in it this year. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a good year. What the heck? It's part of a I don't want my grandmother was here. She used to take a bite out of her. <laughs> she poke a hole with her, you know, finger in the back. I don't want that one. Do that. I think we know who's going to do that, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Ryan, does your grandmother do that? I don't know Ryan's know. story I don't know. about his grandmother. Oh, well, mine was one of them. God, rest her soul. Oh, well, Camille finally showed up. It's about time. We're in the epilogue here. We're just finishing up here at Lounge Academy. And uh, Mary pulled a fast one on me tonight. Well, well, Ryan. Guess another one is in the can, huh? able to be here to coordinate the whole thing. Yeah, I'm glad you finally showed up. It's a good thing. Hope I'm not late to your wedding. <laughs> no, but I know you're a busy guy with all the plans you've been making lately. Yeah, there's been a lot. I've got people pulling me in all different directions. It's going to be weird. In, like in a week, it's going to just suddenly I'll be over? I guess so. And then you'll, you'll just be hanging around here bored, which will be great. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. 
That's going to be fantastic. He's getting married, if you haven't figured that out. But if you didn't get an invitation, pretend you didn't hear me tell you, so it's not awkward. Uh-oh. You never know who's watching. There's only three people invited. Yeah, so, uh, so a guy I've known, I don't know how long I've known Ra Cha Cha. Yeah. For, for years. Yeah, well, when, you know, when somebody has a nickname, I, I, I still call him I, I completely, because it's enough for me to remember somebody's name. <laughs> Their real name. Like, even if I've known them my whole life. So if they got more than one name, <laughs> the one I heard first, that's the one they're stuck with. If it's a if it's a nickname, that's their name. Yeah. You know, like like Peppy Brown. <laughs> he's he's Peppy Brown. Yeah, he is. Long after his dog is gone, he's still going to be Peppy Brown. Just just to pick one. We haven't seen Peppy Brown in years. Yeah, Peppy Brown owes us a visit. <laughs> What's that, what's that uh, stick on uh, sign on the door of oh, Dave's? That's Lady James, Senior Move Management. Thank you very much. Oh, nice. Lady Senior James, Move Senior Management. Move Management? Yes. This sounds like a great business. Senior Move, so like you schlep, you schlep oh, people's parents idea. out for them? That's a great idea. Like get, get them out of my house now and then. You, oh, well. Lady James, Senior Move Wow, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> How long have you been doing that? Oh. Organizing, downsizing, yeah, specializing in, uh, I can't doing that. Wow, that's great. Now. I have to move, and I don't know what to do with all my stuff, so I'm calling you. Yes, that's exactly And that's what happens, right. so then you go over Or there. you're not moving, but I have so I much stuff, and downside. I just, yes. Then so you can get rid of stuff? I help them figure out what to do with it, if they're ready to unload, and if they're not ready to unload, oh, let's yeah. talk about it. And see do you ever put it in storage? No. I try to discourage. It's like you're just just, uh, just pushing off the inevitable. Somebody's yeah. got to make that decision at some point. Can we do it together? Can we make it fun? Can we donate? Can we sell? Can we recycle, reuse? Lots of things. Wow. Well, yeah, it's very fun. Yeah. Well, that's. All right. What, what do you know? It's what do you great. know? You know. Thank you so we much. We try not to pry, you know, the, the, our guests. <laughs> Fine, but they're just so darn interesting. interesting you, they have, have to sometimes, you know. There, there are so many interesting occupations out there, and just the people that come here, yeah. the things so, you learn. We get the most interesting people. Here. I think so. I ended up taking all their stuff, so I wouldn't be the one. There could be a new spin off the, the Lounge Academy Public Affairs talk show. Yeah. Where yeah. we talk about preservation and then we bring on guests to talk that's about their, well, their business. Yeah, their business. Well, that's that's interesting. Interesting. we'll see how the, we'll see how the ratings are. <laughs> I think you know, I think inter doing you know yeah, interviews with, with people that are here. Um, we had um, Paul Cambria came over to the piano. We had a little nice. little mini interview a few weeks ago. But and just the backgrounds and, uh, of people, you know, whether they are entertainers right. or you know. I think people's backgrounds are really interesting. Some of their fronts are nice, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On that good note, I will say good night and thank you. Thanks, Jane. Jane, Always fun. Jane, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the, the show ended. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, it just, it just, uh, it's just, it's just, Tupperware. <laughs> Come back, we'll hold your Tupperware. You have no idea how, how much I, I wanted some of that. Yeah. And I never think of it other than at the moment I need it. So I never buy it. Here comes Wesley. He 
he's on the West Coast time zone. Right? I think you're in Arizona. Are you in uh, Nevada, uh, Wesley? Wesley Carroll? All right, well, I guess we're done. I'm going to... We're going to end the show. And uh, assuming it's still going on. Facebook just threw me off. There we are. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Um, say good night, Ryan and uh, Mary. To the, oh, you say good night to the audience. Good night, audience. Good night, audience. This was a really nice night. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody. The virtual lounge community. We'll see you uh, in same time, same channel, Friday night, Lounge Academy. And remember, don't take the law into your own hands. You take them to court. <laughs> That's great advice, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs>